Hello, I'm Amber Canwar. Welcome to the close as we march towards the end of a trading day. We're going to unpack what lower inflation means for the rate path in this country. And we'll get the best ETFs to buy in hot picks and learn about a Bitcoin miner powered entirely by green energy. But first, let's take a look at where markets are trading in this final half hour of trading. We are in the red. Today is a bit of a wreck for tech stocks. This ahead of crucial earnings from NVIDIA tomorrow. The market is pricing in an 11 percent move in NVIDIA when it reports and there's anxieties about what that number could hold. That's taking down the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. While the TSX is also being hit by weakness in tech, it's being offset by strength in financials. As we head into the close, we're waiting for earnings from First Quantum and Palo Alto Networks. Well, the market adjusted their expectations for rate cuts in this country after Canada's inflation rate came in surprisingly lower than expected, dropping below 3 percent for the first time since June. And when you strip out some of the volatile items like uh, gasoline, you are seeing even lower inflation. In fact, when you take out rising mortgage costs, inflation is right around the Bank of Canada's target. Let's bring in Robert Kapsick, senior economist at BMO Capital Markets for some perspective in this. Robert, we were a little bit anxious about inflation because of the upside surprises we were getting south of the border last week. Today in Canada, relief when it comes to the pace of price increases. Yeah, you got it. It was relief. I mean, not only a strong January CPI report that uh, freaked the market out a little bit and triggered some repricing in terms of rate cut expectations. But remember, November, December, especially for CPI in Canada, was was on the hawkish side of expectations, too. So um, looking across the board, this was pretty good news. And it wasn't really one factor either. Uh, there were a lot of soft numbers under the headline that suggest that this was a pretty dovish report. And we have, we have seen expectations kind of get um, uh, priced back a little bit in terms of the timing of rate cuts. And when do you, did, did this report affect when you think we might see the first rate cut? No, so look, we, we came into the year um, of, of the view that the market got a little bit too hopped up, a little bit too, um, uh, too aggressive with, with not only the timing of when rate cuts would start, but also the magnitude through the course of the year. And then the last couple of weeks, we kind of saw that priced out even, even beyond what our view was. So our view all along, through this kind of up and down of, of CPI and the economic data flow has been that the bank would be in a position to start cutting rates in June. And just given the numbers that we've seen this morning, I think we're, we're getting, we're getting in, uh, you know, even more comfortable with that call at this point. If you factor out the, the cost of, of housing, rent and mortgage, uh, your team points out that inflation is sitting right at 2%. Why not cut rates now? Well, I think you got to be a little bit careful with, you know, stripping out one or two components, especially mortgage interest costs. Housing's a tricky one in the CPI because you have a few factors right now that are very inflationary, like rent and mortgage interest costs. And you can argue that, yes, the bank has, has raised rates and that's contributed to higher mortgage interest costs. You can argue that rent is, is a demand problem on the demographic side. It's not really something that Bank of Canada policy is going to control. So. If you go ahead and strip those factors out, though, and say, okay, let's cut rates, well, what do we do? Then we trigger the other components of housing that are directly fed by rising house prices. And, you know, don't be surprised at all if the bank was to come out and cut rates very quickly and aggressively to see the, the resale market ramp back up. And that, at the end of the day, starts to put some upward pressure back on inflation. So it's not quite as simple as just ignoring shelter costs. But when you look at the overall basket, I think we're seeing pretty good progress on the core inflation metrics. Um, obviously, there, there are three or four of them to choose from. But for the most part, they're saying that the bank is very close, not quite there yet when you look at the underlying run rates, but we're getting very close. Does this mean the bank, is, the bank of Canada is closer to rate cuts than the U.S.? Uh, so we, we have that view uh, that the bank is going to be in position to cut rates a little bit sooner. So we have them going in June. As I said, we have the Fed still holding off until July. And, and some of the data flow out of the U.S. has been 
you know, supportive of push, pushing back those rate cut expectations. Again, they got pretty early in the year as, as we came into, into 2024. So I do think there is a case for that. Part of it is just the reality that the economy on the ground is running quite a bit softer in Canada. Um, better than expected, yes, but even even still, we're still looking at, you know, 1% growth in, in Q4, probably less than 1% growth in Q1. So relative to expectations, good, but in, in absolute terms, it's, it's still pretty sluggish relative to the U.S. Um, and then on the inflation front, I mean, obviously the January report and how those two uh, Price trends have diverged in the last month or two have, have supported that case as well. Do you think that couple, you know, weaker growth prospects or earlier rate cuts could weigh a little bit more sharply on the Canadian dollar then? Well, it, it, it's possible if if the bank can really detach from the Fed. We just we just don't think there's too much scope for the bank to move away from the Fed in terms of economic fundamentals and inflation fundamentals. You know, the flip side of this argument is that uh, Canada has a productivity problem, right? Whereas in the U.S., we're seeing exceptionally strong productivity numbers, which tends to absorb inflation and allow rates to, to, to trend lower than they otherwise would. In Canada, it's the opposite. We're really struggling with productivity growth. So weighing all these factors together, I mean, yes, the, the case for them to move a little bit sooner is probably there. The case for them to diverge too far is probably not there. And then you got at the end of the day, when you're thinking about the currency, look at what's priced into the market. And, and for the most part, I don't think... Our view here is all that too, all, all that different from the markets, you know, such that it would drive a big move in the currency if we were to get it.